There are other types of formats uh, that you can save data in beyond the tabular format beyond, or, or the CSV file or text file. Um, these are also textual formats, but they're a little bit different for from the tabular data that we've talked about before. Um, and the two main functions for writing out data and for, are dumping and de-putting. So, and, and the idea behind these types of formats is that they're text formats, but they're not really... Um, they are not really formatted in a way that's uh, in the same as like a table because they contain a little bit more metadata. So data about, for example, the type of the data in um, in each in each uh, object, for example. So if you if you dump or you deput uh, a data frame, it will include in the output um, the the class of each column of the, of the data frame. So you don't have to specify it when you read it in. And so the advantage of of doing of using this type of mechanism to store data or to read or to read data is that you don't have it's still a textual format uh, which can be useful, uh, but it also contains metadata so that you don't have to specify it every single time you read it in. Because then if you don't if the metadata do not get carried with the data set itself, uh, then it, they they can get lost if you if they get transferred somewhere else and if you don't remember what the metadata are, for example, the classes of the different columns, then you kind of have to reconstruct that from scratch. Um, so that's one advantage of using a, using a function like dump or deput to um, to output data from R. And similarly, the um, uh, the 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 functions for reading data using for, that have been outputted using dump or deput are source and uh, deget. Um, so in general, uh, textual formats are very nice formats for uh, storing data because um, um, there's a, a number of different types of uh, different advantages to them. First of all, they're editable, so you can, if you want to, you can edit them. Uh, I wouldn't say this is something that I would advise, uh, but because of you want something that's reproducible. But for example, if something gets corrupted, um, then you can look at the you can look at the file to see if it's possible to recover it. So textual formats can be a little bit longer lived. Um, if you're going to be storing data for a long time, sometimes it's useful to if it's, if it's possible to use a type of textual format um, so that you can avoid problems, potential problems with corruption. Um, textual formats can also work better if you're using like a version control program like Subversion or Git uh, where you're tracking changes between documents. Um, and, and those types of programs tend to be much more useful with textual data rather than binary data uh, so that you can track changes meaningfully. Um, textual formats adhere to the general kind of Unix philosophy, uh, which is to store all kinds of data, which generally stores all kinds of data in text. Um, uh, but the one downside with textual formats is they tend not to be very space efficient. So they tend to, to they tend to take up a lot of space, um, and so it often need to be compressed. So uh, deep the deep put function takes an, uh, an arbitrary R object, um, and it will, you, it will take most types of R objects, except for some more exotic ones, uh, and it will create some R code that will essentially reconstruct the object in R. So here I'm creating a small data frame. It's got two columns. Uh, the first column is called A, the second column is called B, um, and then I'm going to deput this data frame, and you'll see the out if you just call deput, it will just output the result to the console. And you can see that what I've done is what it does is it's it's, re it's constructed some R code. Uh, for example, it's creating this list that has these two elements in it, and you can see that each element has um, uh, has the data that's in it, and uh, it has the names embedded here. It's got the row names uh, here, um, and it has the class of the object, which in this case is a data frame. And so all the metadata here, like the row names and the names and the class, are all included in the output. Now, of course, you generally don't want to uh, print this to the console. It's not particularly useful. You probably want to save it to a file. So you can deput the object to a file, um, and then later on, you can read it into R using deget. Uh, and when you deget the object, you'll get this object, and you'll see that it's you've kind of reconstructed the object from before. So the deput function essentially writes R code, which can be used to reconstruct an R object. The dump function is a lot like deget. However, the difference is that the deget can only be used on a single R object, whereas dump can be used to, uh, on multiple R objects. And so what you do is that what you pass to dump is a character vector which contains the names of the objects. So here I've created two objects, one called X, the other called Y. And what I pass to dump is are the names of those objects. So the names are X and Y. And I give it a file um, that I want to store the objects in. Um, and then I can remove them if I want to, but to read those objects back into R, I can call the source function on that file, and you'll see that the Y object and the X object have been reconstructed. 